Jacob Burton here from StellaCulinary.com. And in the previous two videos on brining, we talked about how a brine actually works and discussed the three major brining strategies, which are dry rubs, gradient brining, and equilibrium brining. In this, part three of our brining video series, we're going to explore how to precisely calculate a brine, whether using the gradient or equilibrium method. So first, let's cover gradient brining. To calculate the amount of salt you'll need for any given gradient brine, use the following formula. Desired brine salinity times water weight equals the salt weight, which is then added to the water. Now, like I mentioned before, the salinity of a gradient brine is usually between 5 to 10% salt based on the water's weight. And the amount of water used is usually uh, just enough to completely submerge the product being brined. For example, let's say we're brining a couple of chicken breasts and we've determined that it's going to take roughly 1,000 grams of water to comfortably cover the breast. I want to make a 5% brine, not because it's better than, say, an 8% brine, but because it's what I'm used to using. So our formula would look like this. 1,000 grams of water times 0 0.05, which is 5%, equals 50 grams of salt. Now, the 50 grams of salt is then dissolved into our 1,000 grams of water, yielding a 5% brine. By the way, when using the gradient brining method, it's much easier to always use the same strength brine and then just adjust your brining times for each individual product. For example, at Stella, we make a large batch of 5% brine and use this to brine pretty much everything from pork to fish to chicken. Now, instead of making individual brines for each different type of protein, we'll consistently use our 5% brine and adjust our brining times based upon the actual product that we're brining. So calculating an equilibrium brine is a little more involved, uh, but just as easy with a little practice and some understanding of the basic concept. Now, to start, you first need to take the weight of the food being brined and subtract any bone weight since the brine will not diffuse into the bones. Next, take the food weight minus any bone weight and add to it the amount of water that you're going to use for your brine. Now, it's highly recommended that you use equal amounts of water to meet by weight because, as you'll see in a few moments, it makes calculating an equilibrium brine much easier. Now, once you've added the water weight to the weight of the food, simply multiply that amount by your desired finished salinity. Now, this means that if you want your brined food product to contain 1% salt when the brining process is complete, you would multiply the combined weight of the water and the food by 0 0.01 or 1%, and this equation then results in the amount of salt you need to create your equilibrium brine. For example... Let's assume that we're going to brine a whole bone-in chicken with a total weight of 5 pounds. Now, since the average bone weight of a whole chicken is usually around, say, 40%, we'll calculate the weight of the bones as follows. 5 pounds times 0.4, or 40%, equals 2 pounds of bone weight. So then our actual flesh weight is obviously 3 pounds. Now, since it's easiest to use the same amount of water when calculating an equilibrium brine, we're going to take three pounds of water and add it to our three pounds of chicken meat for a total of six pounds. Now I'm going to decide that I want my protein to contain 1% salt when the brining process is finished. Now remember, your salt range, as we talked in our previous video, will be about half percent on the low side, 1% uh, on the high side. So to achieve this 1% salt content in my finished product, I'm going to multiply the combined weight of the water and the chicken, just the flesh, not the bones, of 6 pounds by point. 0, 0.01 or 1% to get 0 0.06. So as we know, there are 16 ounces in a pound, so I can multiply 0 0.06 by 16 to find out that I'll need 0.96 ounces of salt dissolved in my 3 pounds of water. And to convert this into grams, I would multiply 0 0.96 times 28.3, which will give me 27.1 grams. This is also a good argument why I prefer to, to uh, weigh everything in grams because it's much easier to use uh, base 10 than it is to use ounces and pounds. Now, like I mentioned in our previous video, when we outline the equilibrium brining method, the salt is dissolved into the water and readings with a salinity meter are taken until the brine's salinity reaches the desired salt percentage. So when I initially dissolve 
the salt into the water, the water will contain 2% salt because it has, uh, hasn't had any time to diffuse into the chicken flesh. Now, the trick, however, is that salinity meters, unfortunately, don't give readings in percentages, but instead give readings in parts per million. This means that if you're using the equilibrium brining method, it is really helpful to understand how to calculate parts per million or PPM for short. So to calculate, basically one part per million is going to equal one milligram per 1,000 grams. Now, since one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams, a 1% salt solution uh, could be viewed as this. So 10 grams or 10,000 milligrams of salt dissolved into 1,000 grams or 1 million milligrams of water is going to make a 1% salt concentration read out as 10,000 parts per million on a salinity meter. Now, I know I just uh, threw you a curveball there with the, all of a sudden you're like, wait a second, I thought we were talking about brining. Now I got to figure out how to calculate parts per million too. Well, that's why I recommended at the beginning of this calculation that you always use equal amounts of water to flesh being brined. Because in this example, uh, when using equal amounts of water and chicken with the desired finished salinity of 1%, when the salt is added to the water, the concentration of the salt solution will actually start at 2% salinity. Now again, since a salt meter will actually read out in parts per million and not a percentage, this is why using the equal amounts of water to food uh, makes this process so much more forgiving. When your parts per million drops to half of its initial reading, you know that a state of equal equilibrium has been reached and the food is finished brining. So when our equilibrium brine, which in our example would technically have an initial reading of 2% or 20,000 parts per million, drops to 1% or 10,000 parts per million, which is half of the original uh, reading of 20,000 parts per million, we now know that the chicken is also at 1% salinity on the interior of the meat, uh, and now an equilibrium has been achieved and the brining process is complete. Now, since our whole brine chicken contains the precise amount of salt that we want in our finished product, uh, it's not necessary to either rinse the surface of the meat or let it rest before cooking. The only purpose for actually resting the meat isn't for the diffusion process uh, to complete, because it's already completed, obviously. It's just to allow the flesh or the exterior of the chicken, uh, more precisely the skin, to dry out so it will crisp up more evenly during the cooking process. Now, in part four, in the final video of this series, we're going to start talking about secondary ingredients that you can use to enhance both flavor, texture, and overall moisture retention of your brines. And we're also going to look at some times and charts uh, for the appropriate period of time to brine a given piece of meat. So stay tuned for that.